All right, so today we are talking about the Backbone One. We're unboxing it, getting my initial thoughts, and then, because what you're about to watch with the unboxing is two months old, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts with two months hands-on with this device. Let's dive in. Okay, so today we're taking a look at the brand new Backbone One. This piece of hardware says it will change mobile gaming forever, and well, let's find out. All right, so I had to pick one of these up, and I will say that was one of the gripes, I would say, so far of this. I haven't even gotten into it right, and that's simply because you had to download their app, because I guess they're trying to like maybe maintain traffic, I'm not sure, but you have to download their app, and then you get placed into the wait list. Now granted, this is from my experience so far. Maybe by the time you're watching this, maybe it's available on Amazon, and you don't have to do all this, but as of right now, you have to download their Backbone app, and get into a queue and then hope that you can get through and get you one of these if you're wanting to try it out. Which of course, if you're watching this, you probably wanna try it out or at least interested. And so that was kind of interesting, but if you're not familiar with this, essentially it's an iOS controller and it is backed by the likes of Nadeshot, Mr. Beast, and even Ashton Kutcher. So there is undeniably a little bit of hype behind this, which sounds weird to say for a mobile gaming controller for an iPhone, but there actually is. So far, the packaging, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. Oh, I was supposed to open this like this, huh? Hang on, let's see, is there some sort of like, something, ah. Play solo, play with friends, play with your arch nemesis. Backbone transforms your iPhone into a next level gaming device. Capture game clips and screenshots, collapsible and compact design, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, play games to support controllers, low latency connection, and pass through charging and audio. Anyway, so I read this quote once where it's like, hardware without software is basically useless. And apparently this Backbone controller has great software to back its actual apparently good hardware. So we're about to find that out. Now what I'm gonna actually do, after we unbox this, I'm gonna actually run this through its paces. Ooh. Okay, that's already very, very nice. I'm gonna run it through its paces, because I wanna properly review this, right? But I did wanna unbox it and get the whole unboxing experience with you guys, which by the way, this was actually pretty amazing. I don't think, is there anything under this? Oh, the actual, okay, there's like a some documentation and stuff like that. Game on, snap in. I am very impressed so far. This feels really premium like really, really premium. Wow. Uh, anyway, so I'm actually use this for a couple of days before giving you guys my final verdict. But of course I did want to bring you guys along for the actual unboxing as well. Okay, so wow. All right, let's go to the actual Backbone software. Okay, it's recognizing that it's just working. Wow, it is, it's just... <laughs> It wants me to pick an emoji, so I'm picking the crying one because why not? Hey, I got Nanogenics. Backbone is a next level gaming device, so we'll need you to allow a few things to get started. Wow, okay, I was not expecting it to feel even this good. Just initial review is it feels great. The fact that its slider works so well, I think is probably doing a lot for it right now. And that setup was so painless and so easy. And it's actually somehow, sorry, I'm, I'm almost speechless about this right now because I can't believe how well this is working. This is actually using this sort of haptic feedback within the iPhone right now to give me some feedback as I go through this. So I'm actually feeling, oh, this is very interesting. All right, I'm gonna go try this out for a couple days and then I'm gonna give you guys my proper review right now. Much, much, much later. Okay, so what you watched was from the first weekend of November. I'm now recording this on the second weekend of January and I've had quite some time to actually use this. Now what you're looking at, I actually have two of these devices right now because I actually got sent one through a sponsorship on the main channel. Now the, the unboxing and everything was well before I knew I was gonna be sponsored by them. So since they gave me one of these free, I haven't opened this up at all, I'm gonna be giving this away. If you wanna have a chance at winning this, go follow me on Instagram, I'm gonna be doing the giveaway over there. So setting that off to the side, a couple of things, just in case you are someone that you know is very interested in this. I'm gonna try to keep this mostly candid, not going too deep, because at the end of the day, it is still just a controller for your phone, but mobile gaming is getting huge, so that's why I really wanted to cover it. I also use the Razer Kishi here. I've had this since June, so we've had about, what, six, almost seven months of hands-on with this. This only works with Android. They actually released an iPhone one as well, but kind of giving some credits to how much actual mobile, real gaming I do outside of things like, you know, Legends, the touch-based games, the actual things like COD, things like Remote Play, things like, you know, just testing these controllers out. I also have the Stadia set up here with the actual mount. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this because the weight distribution using something like this, especially at putting it right here is not great when you're trying to like lay back with it. It's fine if you're leaning forward with it, but it's not, it's not the best. 
But when it comes to the backbone, the reason why we're all here, it feels great. It works great when you're laying with it, works great when you're sitting up with it, works great when you're like laying completely back in the bed with it, and it just works. Now to get some of my cons out of the way right now, you cannot use this with a case. Um, I've tried a couple of cases with this. Again, this is the very minimal case that Apple sells in their store, and it is about as thin as you're gonna get on a case, and it doesn't work, so you do have to take your phone out of the case to put it into the backbone. Next up, my next con is with the software. Not so much the hardware, because this thing I've used almost on, the, on a daily for two months, it still looks like honestly good. There's some scuffing, obviously, from just taking it here and there. Uh, throughout my house, it's not really going a lot of places, but still, just with, really with the software. The software can be buggy from time to time, going back into the Backbone app, and we had some issues with the party feature. I've actually got to test out the party feature, which it does have built in. As you can see there, I can start a party, and I can immediately invite my friends. And the thing with this software that is awesome, can also get annoying from time to time, that so you can adjust this, you can turn it off and on, but the second that I went into the Backbone app, right here to film this video, my buddy Red here actually got a notification immediately. And then it will also send another notification if I say go down here and hop into Call of Duty Mobile, it will then say Tyler is now playing Call of Duty Mobile. Now the dope thing about that is I can click on that or he can actually press on that notification and immediately hop into the party with me and immediately be playing Call of Duty Mobile. But there is still some glitchiness. So the way this works, the best way I can compare it is literally hopping on Xbox Live. Hopping into an Xbox Live party and just being able to go between games, go between and doing anything, or also a party on, on PlayStation works like this now too, but it's its own like external app without having to use the internal stuff because COD actually does offer voice chat in game, but, <laughs> but this is great because you can browse your phone and do things without just being in COD and still getting to talk to each other, which it works great with, with ear pod, any, anything really, realistically speaking, you can use the onboard uh, mic and, and speakers as well, and it works just fine. So that part of this is fantastic, but it is glitchy. There were times where he and I couldn't hear each other and we'd have to disconnect from the party and reconnect to the party, but when it works, it's golden. And I know that there's still like, this is still in the very early stages, so I'm sure they're still working through the kinks, so those things will, I'm sure, eventually get less and less and less. But right now, really, that's the only two cons I can think, is that the software has a bit of glitchiness and you cannot use this with case, which I just, I really don't like because having to take the case off, set it to the side, and then when I'm done playing for, you know, 20, 30 minutes or maybe an hour, then I gotta take it back off and put the case back on. It's very minimal thing, very like first world problem, but it is still a con nonetheless. So hopping into some of the great things that I love about it. First off, the build quality. It's absolutely insane. I, the best thing I can say about this is it truly does feel like something Apple would sell. Apple would let them certify and be like, hey, this is part of our brand now. And so I I don't know how else to explain it other than the build quality is just great. Don't get me wrong, the Razer Kishi build is not bad, but like even comparing the bunkers um, to like the R1L1 to just everything about it, it just feels infinitely better over here. And again, there's nothing wrong with this. This is good. This is better than what I would expect for most mobile controllers, but this right here, feels like it was just made to be shipped to be like, hey, this is iPhone gaming, which I hope that that makes some sort of sense to y'all. <laughs> so build quality, fantastic. Um, I already told you guys that there was a little bit of glitchiness within the app, but the actual app itself is pretty great. It does a good job of curating the games that support controllers on iPhone right now, which they're trying to push as much as possible, it seems like, but you can play things obviously like Minecraft. There are some things that you would expect to have controller support. This is nothing on Backbone. This is actually the, the developers that put out their apps. There are some things you would expect to have controller support that don't. I'm not gonna go into a detailed list of that, but there are certain things, but like Stardew Valley, Brawlhalla, Minecraft, like all these things support controllers. And so it does a really good job of inside the Backbone app, like showing you a break, a good solid list, trying to formulate words, right? It's hard sometimes, of actual applications that do support controllers and that work great with it. So my favorite thing without question has been either playing Stadia with this, because Stadia now works via the Safari browser on iOS, and then remote play is great. Surprisingly, remote play on the PlayStation 5 is actually better than remote play on the Xbox. Like the connection, I mean, it's all my same home network, but I experience more lag, more latency, uh, and more at having to catch up with itself on the Xbox than on the PlayStation. But anywho, my favorite thing, Call of Duty, period. Um, Call of Duty works so well, I can't believe how great. I played this game at launch for a little bit. I can't believe how great this game actually is on mobile. And there's so many fantastic maps they've implemented. Like, I just, I don't understand. Like, I, I'm just, when I'm playing with my, with my friend Red, 
and we're like having fun on here. I'm like, are we really playing on an iPhone right now and having this much fun on COD? And he's just like, yeah, it's weird. So moving on from that, they actually have a bunch of dedicated buttons here. And the thing is, is you have the Backbone logo button. If you press that, no matter where you are, it will bring you back to the actual Backbone built-in application. Then you got this button over here, which immediately lets you start, uh, and I wanna press it because it'll, it'll stop my recording that you can see on the screen from time to time. But if I press that, it immediately lets me, pops up and lets me start recording without having to do the whole swipe down, record, all of that. And then you have your built-in sort of start and select buttons too. So you're, you're really covered here on everything in terms of the actual hardware. So in conclusion, would I recommend the Backbone One? Yes and no. I think if you're just looking for a controller solution and maybe you're already sitting on like an Xbox or PS4 controller and you can buy like a 15, 10, $20 like attachment to attach your phone onto it and you don't care that much about the quality of this, then you probably could go that route because you've already got the 50, $60 controller. So an extra 10, 15 won't be that bad. But if you're sitting here looking for an overall controller solution, maybe even have some friends you can get in on this with so you can actually do the party chat and stuff like that with, I think this is honestly worth the price tag of $99.99. And I know that's, that is a lot. And even though I did talk not great about the software, when it does work, and it works most of the time, like my small sort of cut-ins on it and stuff like that, that was only like a few times in the actual amount that I've actually used it. You know what I mean? So it actually is, it works like 99% of the time perfectly fine. And so you're getting that software suite and really honestly great quality hardware. I think it is worth the hundred dollar price tag because even something like the Razer, Razer Kishi right here, I think on iOS it's still a hundred and on Android it's 80. So you're still looking at $80 for this as well. So you're still within that ballpark of that, but this offers a dope software suite to party up with your friends. So yes, I think it is totally worth it. I'm happy with my purchase. Cause again, I actually, I bought my, <laughs> I, I don't always sent one for free, but I did purchase the one that we're reviewing here. So anyways, don't forget, I am giving one of these away. Follow me at Nanogenics on Instagram, links to all my socials down below. If you don't follow me on Twitter, feel free to do so as well. And of course, if you're new to this channel, you might hit that subscribe button and be ready for all the content right here on Nanotech. But you guys know what to do. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. It is what it is. Have a great, great day. Keep on keeping on. This has been the Backbone One Review here on Nanotech. Tyler signing off. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.